really, really like your approach in practicing this stuff right now. You know, I've actually advised people do similar things. Like you're probably one of the first who actually does it. And considering how fast you get these things up now, pays off. Really does. So very much appreciate that effort. All right, I mentioned there were a couple label things here. So I'll just point those out. Uh, so yeah, right here, bars 22, 23, missing a chord label and a mode name label. I think that was it. So we're going to do a little bonus thing with this as well. So in addition to just getting that labeled, what I'd like you to do is all these scale shapes that involve these whole step, whole step stretches, like the three, five, seven, or down here, let's say the five, seven, nine, and where's another one? Like the, the three, five, oh, that's the new label thing. Uh, B. Lydian is incorrect. That is not B. Lydian. But, so yeah, labeling things. Fill in the label for bar 22 and 23 and correct the mode name for bar 47. Uh, anyway, see all these scales that have the whole step, whole step thing, see if you can figure out how to get rid of the whole step, whole step. So for example, Instead of playing this Fionian the way you have it, mean, it's totally fine to do it this way. I just want you to have more options and be able to look at things a little bit different. So yeah, instead of playing it like this, a more condensed way, possibly easier way, would be something like this. So try that. See if you can figure those things out. Uh, just change those notes around a little bit. So it's just the placement of the notes, really. Because the scale itself is exactly the same. We're just playing it a little bit different. Okay. On to the newest thing here. So two different rhythms right here. So that's one rhythm, that's another rhythm, and then we do it again, just notated a little different in the, uh, in the appearance of the notes, but this rhythm here is exactly the same as that rhythm there. So we got the eighth note, eighth notes, eighth note tied to an eighth note, which is a quarter note long, so quarter note, quarter note. Eighth note, eighth note, quarter, 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 eighth note, eighth note, quarter note, quarter note, eighth note, eighth note. All right. So just like the previous stuff, when you have your missed downbeats, so in this case, we do not play on the downbeat of two here, and we do not play on the downbeat of four here. So make sure that you still strum down on those down beats. You just don't hit the strings. Okay. Here we go. There's volume on this. 60. Number one. One, two, three, four. One, and three, four. One. So when you play that G5 over D, use your pinky on that G string. So this way you go from this inverted fifth chord to a regular power chord with one finger. Because if you do it this way and you go into a regular power chord, you got that much more work to do. We just want to do this. So the G5 over D, use your pinky instead of your ring finger. One more time. One, 
two, three, four, one, and three, four, one, two, three, and, and one, and, and three, four, one, two, three, and, and done. 120. One, two, three, four, one, and, and three, four, one. One eighty one two one two three four two forty one two one two three four Ugh. one two one two three four There we go. All right, number two. To, uh, ooh, I forgot to do a thing. All right, so we got this rhythm again. So that was the, the rhythm shown in the second bar of the previous one. And there, there's a reason why we're doing it like this. Big picture stuff. So it was basically preparation for what's to come. Get you prepared for what's to come. All right, uh, so again, written out two different ways, but because we are crossing a bar, we're crossing the bar line here and here, this bar looks exactly the same as that. So we have to have the tie stuff here because, again, we're crossing over that bar line. So that means you will be changing chords, at least changing a chord here, on the up stroke or upbeat of one. So just like some of those chord changes you did this past week, make sure you wait until that upbeat of one comes in to make the chord change. Gotta make sure we don't change early. So, again, the rhythm up here is exactly the same as down here. Back down to 60. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, and, 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 two, three, four, and, one, two, three, and, and, two, three, four, and, done. One eighty one two one two three four two forty one two one two three four All right now now something a little interesting I think this is what we got set up for for this chord stuff I thought this might be a good way to help you get more acquainted with all this inversion stuff so you got 11 bars per line every two lines will be the full call it a progression so Changing chords one note at a time. So if you look here, um, whoops. So going from this G chord, and I started there. This way, the lowest fret number is 12, and it worked out to getting all the way down to a lower octave. So when you start these chords, um, Actually, you know what? Let me just input that now. I think that might be good, good choice now that I think about it. I want you to definitely get a lot of good thinking in. I don't want to be 
too ridiculous with what I give you. Don't want to make it more difficult than it should be. Okay. And boom, boom, boom. Wait, that's not correct. What am I doing wrong? Playing on the wrong spot. There. Okay. Okay. That looks good. No. That's right. Okay. Doubting myself here. All right. So, when you're doing this, yes, we're changing one note at a time. And we're descending the fretboard. But, let me uh, move this up a little. You look at the Roman numerals. So we're, we're skipping two. And this is just a pattern that happens. When you can recognize these patterns, I think it's very helpful in understanding all this stuff. You can come up with all kinds of neat things yourself too. So, we're starting with the five chord. Again, this is just so we can start at the high octave and work down to an open chord. So that's why I picked it. We're working down to the open position. So as we descend in notes, we start off by going higher in the Roman numerals. So we go from five up to seven. So we're skipping every other number. Skip, and we go from seven, we skip one to two. We go from two, skip three to four. Four, skip five to six. It's over and over and over again. We keep doing it that way. So as we do that, we change one note at a time. So with that G chord, first thing we do to get to our B diminished, it's gonna be go B diminished over F. We take the bottom note and lower that first. And then we take the middle notes and lower that. 14 down to 12. So again, we take the bottom note, lower that down. So 15 down to 13. And then we're going to take the 14, the middle note, down to 12. And then, so we basically went from no inversion to the second invert, or yeah, second inversion and then first inversion. So no inversion, second inversion, first inversion. And then we go back to no inversion here. And we do that by taking this top note and lowering that down. So just working through it like that. So we lower the bottom, lower the middle, lower the top. Lower the bottom, lower the middle, lower the top. Lower the bottom, lower the middle, lower the top. Lower the bottom, lower the middle, lower the top, lower the bottom, lower the middle, lower the top, lower the bottom, lower the middle, lower the top, lower the bottom, lower the middle, lower the top. <laughs> Start to get lost there. So that's the idea. Run through that, try and make sense of the whole thing. And then what I uh, got here is your starting chord for each new group and so that's your job with this fill it in and that includes the Roman numerals so chord name plus Roman numerals so any questions come up let me know take your time with it uh, the more you do stuff like this just the more you can recall what that stuff is and the big thing is just remembering um, you know, what the major shape looks like, you know, various, that is a minor, that's the major shape, major shape, major shape, major shape, so yeah, just kind of think of like, you can like do that kind of thing, just like, that's a major shape, or like kind of go through, like the, so you take that C chord there, the 10, 9, 8, and then you can go just between the different inversions of that, on the starting on the D string, since you said that was your trickiest spot. 
So then we would need a, a C over E. So then we look down here. So we do this C, this, that's your major shape. You also do it up here. And then we would have C over G. So then you can see it like that. So just kind of go between those shapes there. Boom, boom, boom. It's like, and just kind of memorize it that way is a good idea. C. First inversion, second inversion, that's a major shape, that's a major shape, that's a major shape, that's a major shape. I hope that's making sense. It sounds good in my head, but when it comes out, I don't know. All right, any questions, let me know. I will see you again in your next video.